there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Gold in the Old West. Glen Gold. Say hey. Hello, everybody. How you doing today? Let's talk to him. Glen Gold. Scene one, take one. Mark. Thank you, Rick. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Glen. I can call you Glen, right? Sure, that's fine. Okay. What was the first Western you remember being really a plane? What was the first Western you remember being in, and what did you do in it? Oh, the very, very first Western, uh, HUD. HUD, oh wow, with Paul Newman. Yeah. Wow. Patricia Neal, Brandon DeWall. Well, what did you do in it? I was one of those 20 or 30 guys standing up on the bank of that old silo shooting them cows. What, was that filmed here in Arizona? No, that was filmed in Claude, Texas. This little little town about 15, 20 miles just outside of Amarillo, Texas. Okay. You had to bring up Amarillo? So I know you were personal friends with Jack Elam. Um, and I, I understand he introduced you to John Wayne. Yeah, he, uh, he, he asked me if I wanted to try to get on when they were doing Rio Lobo. And, I said, yeah. So he told me to come out. He'd get me on. They let me on the set, and he introduced me to John Wayne. I'm John Wayne. Stood there, and Duke talked for about five minutes, and I just stood there with my mouth open listening. Yeah. And when it was all over, he couldn't use me or wouldn't use me, and I left. Oh, wow. Huh. And uh, he's, as but, big, he's as big as they say he was, right? Oh, yeah. He yeah. was a giant. Now, what's this damn big yank doing here? Well, this damn big yank's after another damn big yank and helping you in the process. Yeah. But there was another guy there that I hadn't met a couple of times before that I knew. His name was Chuck Roberson. Oh, yeah. How about you, Douglas? Douglas? Just plain Douglas, eh? And you call him Mr. McClenny. Why? Well, Douglas, I guess it's because he earned it. <laughs> Well, Jack Young was out there then, too. And Chuck Roberson was more or less one of Jack's mentors. Chuck helped uh, Jack when he first, when Jack first started in doing stunts in the movie. Oh, wow. Well. Of course, uh, Chuck was John Wayne's double and stand-in and everything. It had been for years. But I had met uh, Chuck a couple of times before in different places. He called me Sailor because when I first, the first time I met him, I was in the Navy and I was in uniform. I mean, he, I really? met you had the, you had the white hat and the whole thing? Or were you? Yeah, I was a regular, well, I, I got as high as E4. And, uh. Well, we appreciate your service. No, well, thank you. I'm just having a hard time picturing you in that little white hat with the little, little white thing. <laughs> David Niven. Didn't you meet him when you were in the Navy? Yeah. You were doing well, a film I met, I met David Niven the same time I met Chuck Roberson for the first time. Oh, really? So it was on the same same movie? It was at the same place. I mean, oh, the wow. same time. Frightfully intelligent, you know. And a great sailor. They come over there and was, was shooting this Navy film called The Enemy Below. It was a story about an American destroyer and a German submarine. Right, I remember that. Yeah. It yeah. was Robert Mitchum and Kurt Jagger. And, uh, didn't they... Didn't they uh, collide? Isn't that how? The, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Okay. The destroyer finally Spoiler rams alert, sorry. the sub, and that's what sinks it. So you never jumped off the ship? No. Uh. Uh. Oh, that's good. And but when they use one of those navy ships like that, see the 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 ship's crew has to be on board. I mean, the actors and stuff come in and do the main parts. And That's neat. the captain of that ship has to be there in charge. Attention, everyone. This is the captain. What was the funniest thing you remember when making a movie? Oh, one of the funniest things, I guess, was a tombstone. Tombstone? Yeah. That's yeah. a real comedy there, that movie. <clears throat> well, it, it was it was funny to me because, okay. because of the way it happened. You hear that? There was a scene in there where 
when when the Europe's first arrive in Tombstone on the wagon, and I'm supposed to be dressed up in this full outfit and everything with a top hat and all, and I'm an old miner and I've I've struck it big, oh. and, and I'm are you drunk? Been celebrate. Okay. <laughs> Probably 10, 12 takes before George was satisfied with the take. And he said, all right, we're gonna go through that one more time. He said, when we all are cut, we want everybody to freeze right where you're at and remember your mark because we've got to reset the cameras and stuff and that's where we will start the next shot. Well, when he hollers cut, I'm right there at the top of those steps with my hand on that post fixing to come down those stairs, okay? You know, Mascal, I, so you know I what know. I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so that was, that was where my uh, one spot was for the next scene. Okay. That's where I started from. Right. The wagon with the herbs on it pulls up to the steps, and Kurt Russell is riding that old bike stud. They holler, action. And all this starts happening. Well, Sam Elliott gets off the wagon, and Kurt Russell starts getting off the horse, and here's this drunk starts down the steps. <laughs> okay. And I've done it just like I had done it 10 or 12 times before. <laughs> George Hollers cut. And then I look, and old Sam Ellis standing there with his head cocked over looking up at me. And then he looks over to George, and he walks over there, says something to George. Adam Taylor was the assistant director, and Buck okay. Taylor's son. No. Oh. Adam comes over, stops at the bottom of the steps, and looks up at me and says, Sir, don't stagger when you come down them steps. Walk straight down the steps, take a left, and go right straight behind the building. Go walk by the hitching rail, and, and that way I was off camera. Right, okay. <laughs> wow, take a lot of fun out of it. And, and the light bulb went off when he said, Don't stagger, walk straight down the steps. You're Sam Elliott, a big star. Yep. And you're doing a scene, and here comes this drunk staggering down the stairs right between yeah. you. Where's your eye going to go? Who are you going to watch? Right, I'm going to watch the drunk. Are you going to watch this guy standing right. beside his horse, this other guy standing right beside his wagon? Are you going to watch this drunk staggering down the steps, see what yeah, he's going to no, do? I, yeah, I, yeah, I understand. I stole the scene. Straight, hey. <laughs> Cut. Not intentionally, I'm doing what I'd been told to do. If you had, if you had done that and stolen the scene from Sam Elliott's mustache, that would have been the most iconic part of the movie Tombstone. Yeah. Now I think we're on all of old Sam. Don't you think? Yeah. But but he wasn't going to let some background player steal the scene from him and Russell. Right. Right. And, and I mean I, I can understand that. Every time you do a drunk, you steal the scene though. Take up the old Elm Street. It's just your deal. It's like you have practice. <laughs> it's memory. It's, it's memory. <laughs> By the way, on the Internet Movie Database, it has you listed as a ghostwriter in the Magnificent Seven TV series. Yeah. So you've been a ghostwriter before. Yeah. No, oh, that's pretty cool. I was also the trail boss in the coffin in the graveyard scene. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, they come and ask me, hey, Glenn. This guy won't do it. Wait, could you play? I uh, sure. Oh, that's cool. So. They also have you listed as, as old man under the porch in the movie Posse. Um, no, I'm the old man on the porch in the swing. So you're not under a porch. No, no, I'm I'm sitting in a porch swing. Oh, okay. On the porch. Maybe I read that wrong. You're eating oatmeal. Yeah. In the is this the Mario Van Peebles one? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll have to watch that. I haven't seen that in years. Yeah. Uh, wow. He, what, why were you eating oatmeal? That's just what they gave you to do, right? It's just something to do instead of instead of, instead of just sitting there looking stupid. I was eating oatmeal, looking stupid. Did they give you oatmeal, or did you just yeah? Eat it was like a you bowl of oatmeal. It, they wouldn't give me no cream and sugar. And I griped about that, but oh, they okay. said, "No, nah, it's just for camera effect." It's not. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Huh. It's not your breakfast. It's just for camera effect. So, Glenn, other than other than. Uh, doing movies and stuff with you which which has been a lot of fun you're you're always great to have on set you always make us all laugh which is awesome hey glenn what's up that's i'm just trying to catch a quick nap you got your eyes open i always sleep with my eyes open why if i close them they keep trying to put me in a pine box i also know you from shooting some fast draw so 
that's something you like to do too, right? Yeah, I've, I've, I've competed in fast draw for years. Did um, you start with world fast draw or cowboy fast draw? World fast draw. World fast draw. And uh, that was way before cowboy fast draw ever came. Well, that's the first time I got started in it was 1959. The fast draw craze was just, it really was a craze. I mean, people were doing it all over the place. Even actors were doing it. Clint Eastwood, James yeah. Garner, Sammy Davis Jr., they were all doing fast draw. Fast draw was a big pastime. Uh, fast draw is still done today, but it's not done to the extreme that it was done back in the 50s. So if, uh, if you were in an amusement park and you saw a fast draw booth, by God, if you were a fan of Westerns, which probably everybody was, yeah. You would go do it for 50 cents, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it costs eight, 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 eight charge you a quarter to step up and shoot three rounds. I love talking to you guys because you guys were there. You guys were there in the heyday, you know? You know, it's been a real pleasure knowing you. Yeah, um, uh, working on set with you has been fun, too. Well, that's... Just well, like working on set with me has been really fun, in a, a, you know, for you, right? Yeah, it's been, a, it's been fast, fantastic working with you and being around you. We still got one to do. We do, yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one uh, for the. We got our sequel to Five the sequel, Mile Cave five, coming yeah. up. Six Mile Cave. Five Mile Cave. No, no, it's the sequel is called Six Mile Cave. Okay, okay. Yeah, they, they added a mile. They added a mile. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I don't <laughs> well, know what still, it's called. We still got that coming up, but we got to do. Yeah, yeah. As soon as this whole thing's over, maybe we'll get to do that. I got a guy, I got a thing coming up in a couple of weeks. I got to have some whiskers for us. So. Oh, very nice. Look at that. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Hey, I. You know, we'll do more. I'm always willing to sit around and tell my life. I'll stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Okay. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. I want to thank Rick Harker here for letting us use his set today. And I want to thank Glenn Gold for being a part of it. So thank you guys very much. You're more than welcome, Jim. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll, we'll see you all down, down the trail. trail. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Just the way it happens. Action. Playing gold. Scene one, take one. Mark. Hi there, everybody. How you doing today? Okay.